Now see how uh, mathematics builds up. So uh, let us uh, write. Now what is the meaning of uh, note saying x minus c less than delta implies f of x minus f of c less than epsilon is equivalent to saying this is in terms of absolute value. I want to write it in terms of sets. It says if I look at the interval, so look at the interval c minus delta to c plus delta. If x satisfies this property, x is in this interval, so x belonging to this implies f of x is where? f of c minus epsilon, f of c plus epsilon. Right? That is same as saying if I look at the image of the interval c minus delta to c plus delta, that is a subset of f of c minus epsilon to f of c plus epsilon of this interval. I am just rewriting everything slowly, changing the notations. f of x belongs to that. If x is in this, then f of x belongs, that means the image of this is inside that. Right? So, what we are saying is given a neighborhood of f of c, given an epsilon neighborhood of f of c, there is a delta neighborhood of the point c, such that the delta neighborhood is mapped into the epsilon neighborhood. Right? So, now it is going in kind of set theory language. Okay. So, uh, the reason is in this language it becomes uh, this definition of continuity becomes is still in terms of uh, intervals. If I write in terms of neighborhoods, given a neighborhood of the point f of c, there is a neighborhood of the point c which is mapped into it. Right, then everything is in terms of neighborhoods. Then it becomes extendable, this definition becomes extendable where there are no sequences, nothing but only neighborhoods, you play with neighborhoods. So, that is the interesting part of it. Okay. So, I just wanted to keep you, uh, make you aware that these two are equivalent ways, it is only matter of saying what language you are choosing. Okay. For example, you can write uh, this in terms of open sets. You can write in terms of open sets, because what is this? This is the neighborhood, right. So, supposing you are given an open set which includes the point f of c, then there will be a neighborhood inside it and there will be a neighborhood coming from inside this and what it says? that if you look at the inverse image of that neighborhood, that is also a neighborhood. So, that means inverse images of open sets are open, that is another equivalent way of saying continuity. So, uh, I am not doing much of this, because uh, you in your courses probably you will not need it, but those who are interested and want to read later on, one can say. So, it is equivalent. I am just saying for the sake of completion, otherwise not uh, not part of this course as far as exam is concerned, okay? so do not bother about it. See, uh, okay. f continuous at x is equal to c, if for every neighborhood of f of c, every neighborhood uh, u of f of c, there is a neighborhood v of c say that f of v is inside u and then one can write this in terms of open sets and so on. So, let us not bother much about it. 
So, what we have done is we have looked at limits of functions, right? And then we looked at uh, continuity property. Limit is we treated limit as the value that you expect the function to take at points, considering estimating the value at a, uh, by looking at the values of the function at nearby points. And when it is equal to actually the value of the function, you call it continuity. And then we looked at various properties of continuous functions, right? Oh, uh, okay. Here is something which, uh, okay, I think that this is also good. So, we have two ways of defining continuity at x is equal to c. One was for every x n converging to c, f of x n converges to f of c. And second, for every uh, epsilon bigger than 0, there is a neighborhood delta bigger than 0 such that x minus c less than x minus c less than delta implies f of x minus f of c is less than epsilon. All right. Now, Again, I am stressing the point that continuity is the property of the function at a point, is a local property, right? What do I mean by local property? Because we are saying x n converging to c, right? So, we are specializing what is happening or even here, right? If for the same epsilon, supposing there are two different points of continuity c 1 and c 2, for the this apps, uh, for the point C1, given epsilon, some delta may work that may, may not work for other places, right? So neighborhoods may change as you points change. Given neighborhood, existence of neighborhoods may change. At one point, a bigger neighborhood may be okay. At other point, maybe you need to go for a smaller neighborhood, right? But there is a notion of continuity which says, irrespective of where you are, it works. So, let us define what is called definition. F, but now this is going to be a property which is a not a local, but more of a global property. F is defined on a domain D to R, we say F is uh, okay. a domain D does not actually, I should write an interval. Okay, is uh, uniform uh, is uniformly continuous on D if it's something like continuity, but it doesn't depend on the point. If for every epsilon neighborhood there is a delta such that whenever x1 and x2 are any two points less than a distance delta should imply f of x1 minus f of x2 is less than epsilon. So, now it says take any two points x1 and x2 in the domain. If x1 is close to x2 by distance delta, it does not matter where they are then f of x 1 is close to f of x 2 by the distance epsilon. You see, if supposing I fix x 2, supposing I fix x 2 and is a point of continuity, right? then given epsilon, there is a delta say that this will happen. If x 2 is a point of continuity, right? then for every x 1, there is a distance at the most delta from x 2, f of x 1 minus f of x 2 will be less than, right. But this choice of delta, there exists a delta may depend upon what is the point x 2. Supposing I reverse the rules, I say x 1 is a point of continuity, then again given epsilon there will be a delta, say that x 1 minus x 2 less than will imply that, but that delta may be different from the earlier one when you are using continuity at the point x 2, 
right. So, let us I uh, will give examples to illustrate that. So, in a sense it looks like that given epsilon there is a delta does not seem to depend on the point where you are looking at continuity, right. Anywhere if two points are close then the values are close. Continuity says if the points are close to that given point then the values are close to the values of the of that point, right. So, that specializes on. So, let us look at probably uh, some examples so that the simplest example is if you look at f of x equal to x is uniformly continuous, right. There is nothing because the function is not doing anything, it is not changing at all. If two points are close, f of x is x itself, right. So, nothing. But let us go a step further, let us look at f of x is equal to x square. We know it is continuous at every point, right. f of x is continuous because f of x is continuous, product of continuous functions is continuous. So, f of x square is continuous if you want to look at it. But every polynomial function is continuous by that limit theorems is continuous. Let us try to write x is equal to 0 continuity, continuity at the point x is equal to 0. So, what does it mean? Epsilon given, I have to choose there is a delta bigger than 0 such that x minus 0 less than delta should imply f x minus f 0 should be less than epsilon, right. That is continuity. So, let us just elaborate this for our setting. That means, mod x less than delta should imply x square at 0 value is 0 is less than epsilon, right, because f of x is x square. So, what is the best possible choice of there exists a delta. So, what is the best possible selection of delta largest possible I can make? So, we can choose delta. What would you like to choose? Delta such that delta square choose delta such that delta square is less than or equal to epsilon. Right? Yeah, epsilon is given to you. So, choose obviously from this equation. Okay. Now, let us look at x is equal to 2. What is happening? At x is equal to 2, right. So, I, I want the same thing given epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that x minus 2 less than delta should imply f x minus f 2 less than epsilon. So, what is f x? So, that is mod f x minus f 2, what is that equal to x square minus f 2, the value is 4. So, this less than epsilon. So, epsilon is given to me, I have to choose a delta. So, what delta you choose? How do you choose delta? If you have not done this kind of a thing earlier, so here is the way. See, I want x square minus 4 to be made small. What I know is x minus 2 is small. So, somehow I have to bring in x minus 2 in this. So, what we do is x square minus 4, I can write it as x minus 2 into x plus 2 mod of that, right. Then whatever my delta is going to be, so this is going to be less than, it is only what we want to do, less than delta into mod of x plus 2. 
right. If you still want, now still x is hanging around, I do not want that x too. So, what you can do is you can write this, there are many ways one can proceed x minus 2 plus 4. Because everything I want in terms of x minus 2, so which is less than or equal to delta mod of x minus 2 plus 4. So, that is less than or equal to delta, sorry, uh, no bracket here, delta, this is less, going to be less than delta plus 4. So, if I want x square minus 4 to be less than epsilon, I know this is going to be less than this, if x minus 2 is going to be less than delta. So, choose delta such that delta into delta plus 4 is less than epsilon, right. Then this quantity will become less than epsilon, so everything will be okay. But now you see what is the difference coming, earlier given epsilon I could choose delta square less than epsilon and now I have to make delta square plus 4 delta to be less than, same delta is not working, right. I have to make some more modifications. Geometrically if you want to look at, here is the geometric way of looking at it. My function is y equal to x square, right. So, let us look at the graph of this function, this is the graph. Okay. So, at x is equal to 0, given epsilon, so let us say this is epsilon is equal to 1, right. Then what is my delta square? Delta square should be less than or equal to 1. So, that will, will work. So, so uh, okay. So, between this and this minus 1 to plus 1, everything will be going there, right. But if I look at some point here, okay, so I have to look at 2 and I look at same epsilon equal to 1, that means what? This is 4, this is 3 and this is 5. In that that big thing will not work. I have to make my interval smaller so that the values go inside it. Right? So what will value? Square root three. Other way around, right? Two square root of five. So that interval I should take. Then the values will go inside when you square it. So it becomes different delta. For the same epsilon, different delta is required. So, I am just trying to illustrate with some example, right. But what it is saying, uniform continuity says, I should not bother about where the point is. If two points are close, then the distance between them is close, okay. That is called uniform continuity, okay. Let us uh, formulate this in terms of, uh, one can ask, can I characterize this in terms of sequences, like this is more like a epsilon delta kind of a definition, right. Sequences are much easier sometimes to handle. So, here is the theorem. So, f i to r the following are equivalent, f is uniformly continuous, and second, see in continuity we are taking a n converges to c. Then f of a n converges to f of c, but if you take two different sequences converging to c, then the limit also is converging. But if I want to remove that point c, then what is the property? 
an converging to c bn converging to c then what is happening to an and bn they are going to zero and what should happen f of an minus f of bn should also go to zero so that makes it independent of the point right so what you saying is uh, continuous is equivalent to saying for every an bn belonging to i mod of an minus bn going to zero should imply f of an minus f of bn goes to zero for example if i take bn say all equal to the constant sequence c then an converging to c implies f of is it okay so apo obviously says continuity uniform continuity implies continuity it is stronger than continuity is that okay that uniform continuity is stronger than continuity for example if this theorem is true you can look at this way or epsilon delta either way i can take all the bns to be the constant sequence c then an converging to c will imply f of an minus f of c goes to zero that is continuity at the point c right